Let's start with a very simple question. When should we run an existing plant? Suppose you own a plant like plant one, our baseload fossil plant in, from our earlier example. Here's some key facts just to remind you. We have a fixed monthly payment of $2,128,968. The marginal uh, the marginal cost is the fuel cost per megawatt hour, which is $2,250. The long-run average total cost, or the levelized cost of energy at our anticipated 80% capacity factor, is $2,990. And our anticipated capacity factor, 80%. Now, this plant is not under a long-term contract to a DISCOM. This is a merchant generator. Uh, so you're trying to decide um, uh, when to run this plant. So the first question we want to ask is, what do you make from this plant each month if you don't run it? Well, this is a trick question, of course. Uh, the answer is that you earn a negative amount, and that is your fixed payment that you have to make each month. If you don't run the plant, you don't have any variable costs, but you still have your fixed costs. And your fixed costs are $2,128,968 every month. You have to write the check whether you run the plant or not. So the question, what do you make each month if you don't run the plant? You make the negative amount that's equal to your fixed costs, your contract costs that you had to pay to get this plant built in the first place. All right. That's not what you want to be doing with this plant all the time. Let's suppose you get an offer from a DISCOM to buy 50% of the capacity of your plant. At 50% capacity, that's 250 megawatts. I'm going to put this back to my nice green marker at 250 megawatts. Your average total cost per megawatt hour is 34.30. The average fixed cost is 11.80. The marginal cost is 22.50. So the question is, what is the minimum price you would take to supply this 50% power, the 50% capacity from this plant? So let's go back to our cost profile and think about this. So let's start by asking what you would do if you were offered um, say you were offered $15. I'll just pick $15 here. Maybe that's 15 maybe it's not. Well, uh, it's costing you $22.50 for each megawatt hour you produce. So if you were earning $15 per megawatt hour and it was costing you $22.50, you definitely wouldn't want to be running this power plant because you're not even making your fuel costs on this power plant. Suppose we were offered $20. Still, you're not at that contract price you're not even making enough to cover the fuel costs. So for every megawatt hour you generated, you'd be losing money. So you wouldn't be wanting to run the power plant at all if you were offered $20. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's suppose the offer is, uh, goes all the way up to $22.50. Well, now the contract offer we have is precisely equal to the fuel cost of operating the power plant. So we make precisely nothing from each megawatt hour of power we produce. On the other hand, it doesn't hurt you to run the plant, but it doesn't help you either. So let's keep going. Let's um, go to, um, let's go to $25. Suppose you have an offer of $25. Now, 
Now, the problem here is that you need to think about is this price is above your variable costs, but it is below the uh, levelized cost of energy. It's below the long run average cost, which is twenty nine ninety. The question is, should you produce at twenty five dollars? If that's the best you can get, should you run the plant if your best offer is twenty five dollars for fifty percent capacity? Actually, I have to go back and erase something because I drew the average total cost from the levelized cost point, but remember we're only contracting for 50 percent. This contract offers for 50 percent. Our marginal cost is the same. Our marginal cost is 2250, but what is our average total cost? Our average total cost at 50 percent capacity is 3430. All right, so we have an offer, an outstanding offer, uh, and it's the best we can do, is we've been offered $25 per megawatt hour from this power plant, where the variable cost are $22.50, but our long run average cost is $34.30. And the question is, should we run the plant? And the, the answer is, well, not running the plant would cost us our monthly fixed cost of two million dollars. Running the plant, we pay for all our variable costs and we're left with we're left with some extra over our variable costs that we can apply to pay off some of that two million dollars a month in fixed costs. So we're actually better off running the plant at $25 even though it's not enough to pay all of our costs, our variable costs and our fixed costs. If we didn't run the plant though, we'd still be paying all our fixed costs, but running the plant at a price of $25 pays a share of our fixed costs that we would otherwise have to pay anyway. Now we're making some of that up in our production. So we would run the plant at a price of $25. At a price of $34.50, if we're offered $34.50, we're actually uh, paying all of our variable costs and all the fixed costs. So we're making what economists call zero economic profit here. This is paying all of our costs plus a fair rate of return on the capital invested. Any offer over thirty-four thirty, let's say we have an offer of forty dollars, then we're actually making more than our levelized than our average total cost, and so we'd be making uh, what we would call a profit, or um, uh, what I'm later going to call scarcity rents uh, on this. Um, 50% capacity factor contract. So let's look at the bottom line from the different from the different choices we might make. If we're offered $20 to run the power plant, we're still we're still having to pay our fixed cost of 2,128,000. But notice because the amount we're earning per megawatt hour doesn't even cost doesn't even cover our variable costs. We're actually worse off. We lose money relative to not running the plant at all. If we have an offer of twenty two fifty, then our net monthly costs are just our fixed costs. We're completely breaking even on our variable costs. At $25, we're actually making less loss than we were before. So our, because each unit we produce 
makes us more than our variable cost of production, we're actually covering some of our fixed costs. That would have had to come from someplace else if we didn't run the plant. So we're better off running the plant at $25, even though it doesn't cover all of our fixed costs. So if $25 is the best price we can get, we ought to run the plant. It'll lower our losses relative to not running the plant. At an offer of 34.33, our net position is zero. We're making up our fixed costs and our variable costs. So we're making what we would call zero profits. But in this case, zero profits is we're covering all our costs plus a fair rate of return to our invested capital. Uh, any offer over 34.30, and we're actually making a net profit. Uh, in addition to what we need to earn to pay a fair rate of return on capital. So, what is our conclusion here? Our conclusion is you should run the plant whenever the price you can get is greater than the average variable cost. If your price is lower than the average variable cost, you would turn the plant off. If the price you're offered is greater than the average variable cost, it's worth running it because you're making up some of those fixed costs. You're losing less money. It'd be nice if you could make more, but if you can't, it's still worth running the plant because you'll be paying some of those fixed costs. At anything less than $2,250, you would choose not to run the plant. So at any cost, any price less than your average variable cost, you would choose to turn the plant off. At any price above your average variable cost at the capacity factor of the contract, you would choose to run the plant. You would take the contract and run the plant. So um, let's go back to our 50% capacity factor. anything over 2250 and we run the plant this area here will still be making a loss but less loss than we were before so it's worth running the plant but uh, it's not going to cover all of our fixed costs anything above 3430 and we'd actually be making a net gain from the contract, so greater than uh, what we need to pay our fixed and variable costs.